Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video we'll be making a frameless shaker card using the new Create a Scene Silhouette Clear Stamp Set from Spellbinders. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create! Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Spellbinders sent me a couple stamp sets this month for me to play around with and create projects here on my channel. A couple weeks ago, for the latest 4 on Friday collaboration, I created 4 cards using the other stamp set they sent me. Up on screen now is a picture of those cards, and I will link that video in the description box below so you can check it out when we're done here today. Well today I'm excited to be playing with another clear stamp set from the collection, which is Into the Wilderness. I will go ahead and link all of those in the description box below if you want to check them out, and I will have a direct link to today's stamp set, which once again is called Create a Scene Silhouette. As I start the process, I will tell you more about the other tools and products I add, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started on my card today, I'm going to be using these four Gina K Designs inks to create kind of a landscape background for that main stamp. I will list in the description box below the four different inks that I used, and I am using a piece of Nina Solar White to blend onto. I start at the bottom with the green ink, and before I kind of figured out, I needed to go about two inches into the piece of cardstock so it would line up correctly with the stamp. But when I got to where I thought was two inches, I did bring the stamp in that I was going to use to see if I was on the right track. Once I knew I had enough of the green, I then used the other three blues going from lightest to darkest from the grass up. The color combo that I am using today is inspired by a video I found from, I think it's Mindy Egan Designs. I did a search on Google for Gina K Designs color combos, I think, and her video popped up. And she has tons of great color combos with Gina K inks, and there is an accompanying, sorry, that word is hard for me, blog post that has like a pictorial of all the different combinations. I will link her video in that description box below if you want to check it out when you're done here. Now if you don't have Gina K Designs inks, you could always Google the same thing for your company. Like if you have Katherine Pooler, do Katherine Pooler ink color combos and I bet you'll get some great ideas with that. Once all four colors had been ink blended, I did go in and fix some of the colors up and here is that finished piece. I did some die cutting off camera. I cut a rectangle out of the center of the landscape piece and it's about two and three quarters inches wide. And then I cut a piece of vellum that would fit that nicely as a mat. Finally, I got out some clear Duralar in three mil and I will be using that for my shaker window and it is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now it's time to do some stamping with that wonderful set from Spellbinders. The first thing I'm going to do is use that main image, the landscape, and I'm going to stamp it onto the frame of the background. Now for now, I do go ahead and put the center piece in just so I know everything is nice and square. And once I have that set up, I will be stamping this with VersaFine Onyx Black. It is a new stamp, so I did ink it up and stamp it a couple times. The second time I inked it up, I just focused mainly where the frame was. 
once that was all done and nice and solid I did clean that stamp off screen and I got ready to stamp the acetate piece so I removed the frame and put that acetate piece aligned in the bottom right corner just like the original piece now for this one I do use stays on jet black since it is a non porous surface and good thing that I aligned it in the corner and had that magnet because it pulled right up but I could just put it right back in place for that second stamped image. I set this piece in a safe place to dry and then I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on the background again. I will be using the birds and the clouds from the stamp set. First I'm going to be stamping the birds. They do stick in that just middle center frame with the VersaFine Onyx Black. After I had my birds flying in the air, I brought in the cloud stamps. Now these I am going to have hang off onto the frame edge. I just thought that gave it a little bit more motion or interest. And I will be stamping this with this white ink from Close to My Heart. Now I stamped this or inked it up and stamped these three times. And you could see them faintly in the background. But boy, do I wish I had a different white. Let me know your favorite white ink in that comment section below. To finish off the stamping, I chose the You Are My Home stamp from the set. And I lined that up in the middle section, just kind of between those birds. Now I'm going to start working on my shaker pocket. To ensure everything is nice and aligned together, I did go ahead and keep my Misty out and I put both of my background pieces down onto the Misty. Now to make sure that the center piece comes up with the acetate exactly where it needs to, I added some adhesive to the bottom edges of the center piece and took a little of the tackiness off with my fingers. Then when I put the acetate in the bottom corner, it lifts that center piece up so nice and smoothly and now I know that's exactly where it needs to be for that final card. Leaving those two pieces adhered together, I flipped it over and I folded back the acetate around that center piece. I did make sure to get nice crisp folds using my fingernails because when those are all done, I carefully remove that front and the adhesive at the bottom and then I'm going to cut off the corners of the acetate. I do cut them a little bit at an angle so when they're folded over to the back of the card there isn't a lot of bulk in the corners. After the edges had been cut away, I put the ink blended piece back into the center of the acetate and then I adhered three of the four edges. I did make sure to get a couple rows of adhesive and press that down nice and firmly. Now I have a little pocket to pour my sequins into. For my shaker bits today, which are just sequins, I'm using kind of a clear holographic. I like that this takes on the color of the background and still adds a little bit of sparkle. Now all of the pieces were ready, so I assembled the card. I started by putting the frame flat down onto the front of the card base, and then I matted my shaker pocket with the piece of vellum. You'll notice here that I am putting quite a bit of adhesive on the back of this piece and that's just because sometimes these shaker pockets like to try to pop themselves open. Off camera I added some foam tape to the back of this piece and after that release paper was pulled I placed it centered onto the card front. That gives it just a little extra dimension being popped up off the card. Then of course I needed to add a little bit more bling and I wanted to bring those sequins to the outside of the shaker so I placed three mini glue dots around the edge and a sequin on each one of those. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. 
thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.